Hello everybody, this is Graham. This is the Bike Bros YouTube channel, and this is a Rocky Mountain Fusion 10, a $1,049 entry-level hardtail from Rocky Mountain, a brand that we love. This is a really nice looking bike, um, and I think that that is probably why I'm doing this video. Um, upon assembling this bike, um, there were some details that I really liked, but mostly it was about that frame and the color. I thought I really want to get this video done. We just received a handful of these bikes. They have been quite rare up until this point this year. This is June of 2022. Um, so depending on where you are, I'm not sure if you will have access to this or if other shops will be getting a bunch more. But I think that this is a roughly thousand dollar Canadian bike that is worth considering. So the Fusion 10, $1,049 Canadian, $909 if you're in the United States. This is the base of a three Fusion lineup from Rocky Mountain. There is also a Fusion 30 at $1,419 in Canada or $1,069 in the States. And there is also a Fusion 40 at $1,739 Canadian or $1,439 American. That is a bike that I will tell you right now has SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain on it, so I would look for another bike in that 1700-ish price point because I do not like SRAM SX. So back to this bike. Um, this has gotten a proper frame update for 2022. Um, that is one of the reasons that we brought this bike in this year is I think Rocky really nailed the way they redesigned this frame, not only for the aesthetics of the bike, it looks much more new school than the old one, um, by having details like that nice um, top tube, seat tube gusset, and that kind of top tube lining up with the uh, seat stays looking real new school. But the actual angles have been updated to make this a much better riding bike for people who are actually gonna ride mountain bike trails. So those updates, 66 and a half degree head tube angle, 74 and a half degree seat tube angle, which on a um, hardtail at this price point, I think are sort of bang on numbers to give a nice stable riding bike that won't be too stable. It'll still be somewhat nimble. Um, and then the actual um, reach of the frame. So the horizontal distance that we're looking at here, um, much more in line with modern bikes, which works really well then with having a nice short stem, wide handlebars. This is a proper modern mountain bike. So getting onto the details on this bike, it is a nine speed micro shift advent equipped bike. So it is a proper one by drive train and by proper, I mean, it's got a good narrow wide chain ring on here. It's a replaceable ring, not a um, plate steel uh, sprocket that's uh, pressed onto the cranks. So if the time came that you actually bent, wore out or anything that chain ring, you can replace that separately by use of those Allen bolts there. As opposed to some of the other bikes that I'm fans of even in this category, like the Marin Bobcat Trail 4, the front chain ring is a stamped steel pressed on one that if you did anything to it, you'd be replacing your crank to take care of that. So that's one of the things I really like on this bike. That's a nice detail. Going to the drivetrain in the nine speed uh, one by setup, I am a fan of this micro shift advent stuff. Uh, micro shift has uh, paid a lot of attention to try and get um, good one by drivetrains on price point bikes, as opposed to Shimano who have been really reluctant to serving this crowd. So a lot of the Acera, Olivio level stuff from Shimano just can't handle um, a cassette of this range. Um, the range on here is from 11 to 42 teeth. So it's not nearly the range of um, some of the more expensive bikes, but 1142, I would say, is the absolute minimum range that you still get a pretty usable bike. Uh, some people might just find it to be a bit limited as far as its hill climbing abilities by going up to 42 teeth. But I still think that the uh, one by nature of the whole thing is, um, is a big asset. 
the big thing that you're getting with that is your chain is going to be very unlikely to bounce off those front chain rings. Um, it's going to be quiet and you're not going to have the nuisance. Front derailers are just a pain in the butt. The more we get used to one by drive trains every time that we're messing with a front derailleur trying to get it to work somewhat well, we just recognize how important one by is to getting a nice, functional, easy to use bike. Part of this advent um, rear derailleur's magic is the fact that it does have a clutch. So a clutch is making for a very, very strong spring right in here. That combined with those narrow wide rings on there is basically helping this chain to stay more taut um, during bumpy um, riding. They give you an off switch for that clutch. And the only reason that that exists is so that if you have to take that wheel off, um, it makes getting the wheel off and on much easier having that, uh, that clutch disengaged. But the rest of the time you want to be riding with it properly engaged. Um, one of the things I would point out, there is no chain state protection on here. So you probably want to wrap an old inner tube. Um, do something, there are store-bought things that you can do, but just something so that um, when you are actually bouncing through stuff, even with the clutch and everything else, that chain will end up bouncing and slapping on there and causing you to chip your paint. So cover that up right away. Uh, wheels on this bike, um, the Fusion is based on 29 inch wheels. There is also a Rocky Mountain Soul, which is their 27 five inch wheel bike. But this is the 29er in the Fusion. So we have WTB Ranger 29 by 2.25 tires on here. These tires are not rated as tubeless ready. So that means that if you try and set them up tubeless, they will basically spew sealant out the sidewalls. So not a tubeless tire, but something that's really nice to see is this Rocky Mountain rim is actually tubeless compatible. So that means if you bought this bike and wanted to upgrade it, you would be buying a new tire, getting a tubeless valve, retaping the rim and putting some sealant in there, but it does give you some upgradability. As well, for upgradability, we have a pretty generous amount of space around the tire um, at the seat and chain stays. That means that this 29 by 2.25 is not the biggest tire that you'll be able to get in there. I think you'll be able to get up to 2.4 tires to fit in this bike um, fairly safely. And that bigger volume tire would be a good part of doing an upgrade on this bike um, to give you a bigger, softer tire um, to give you a little bit more compliance and a little bit better traction. So one of the things that you'll hear as I'm filming this bike is I will be talking about the upgrade worthy bits on here. And I think that that is one of the things that I really like about this bike. When I've posted videos about other bikes in this category, um, Giant Talons, um, or in Bobcat Trail 4 specifically, um, I'm surprised to see how many people ask questions related to upgrades and upgradability, whether things are worthy, what's compatible. And I think that this is a bike between its geometry being worthy um, the fact that it's just a super good looking bike um, and it does come with some key features that give you a lot of room then down the road um, as you fall in love with the bike, you can spend money on uh, blinging it up a little bit. The next feature of the bike that really speaks to that is the seat post. That is just a standard aluminum uh, seat post, but it is a 30.9 diameter. So that's of note because that is the most popular um, diameter for dropper seat posts. So you'd be able to get just about anything as an aftermarket dropper. And the frame is set up. That is a plug in the frame where you could be running a dropper line. That dropper line would then come down and would come out of that port just ahead of your bottom bracket. And there is a plug. Sorry, I'm not on the well-lit side of the bike here, but uh, this is all set up to be able to run a dropper. So that I would say is an absolute key of an upgrade worthy bike these days. Um, and the geometry on here, having a little bit steeper seat tube angle, definitely. Um, 
The other thing here that makes for a really upgrade worthy bike is the head tube on this bike. That is an actual tapered head tube with a zero stack headset in there. So if you wanted to um, do something fancy as far as a fork on here, you definitely could and you would have access to just about uh, anything on the market. The one thing that replacing the fork would probably do is would probably mean that you're up, um, upping the amount of travel. This particular fork, it's a Suntour XCM30 and it's got 100 millimeters of travel. So that's uh, that stroke there. Um, most of the aftermarket forks you're going to find that aren't full on super expensive XC race forks are probably going to start at about 120 millimeters travel. So one thing to keep in mind is you would be changing the geometry of this bike just a little bit with a lot of aftermarket options. And I wouldn't go any longer than a 120 millimeter fork because that would probably add a fair chunk of uh, stresses to the frame that it's not designed for. That XCM30 name, that basically means that the diam diameter of this uh, stanchion here is 30 millimeters. So this is one of those things on a $1,049 bike that is a little bit cheesy compared to a lot of the other bikes in this category would have a 32 millimeter stanchion. But because of the bike's geometry, um, spec and all those things, I still really, really like this bike. Um, what you'll tend to find when you compare all these bikes is there's always one or two things that you would really like changed. Um, the guys who design the bikes for the companies they're basically being told to design around a certain budget and um, maybe another company would have a better fork, maybe one with a lock out there, but they might not have a replaceable chain ring with a nice narrow wide profile. They might not have um, as good a range of one by drivetrain or they might even have a two by drivetrain at that uh, price point. So you're always gonna have a little bit of these trade-offs. I personally think this thing looks great. Um, it would be a great riding bike to start with. Um, and then down the road, if you wanted to, you could upgrade things. If you look at the Rocky Mountain website right now for specs on this bike, one of the things that you might notice is that it is saying that these bikes come with Clark hydraulic disc brakes on it. Clark is a brand that has basically emerged to be a popular option during this pandemic bike shortage thing. Um, because in many cases Shimano hasn't been able to deliver product for these companies to assemble their bikes. In this case we received four or five of these bikes and so far the first three that we pulled out of boxes each still had the Shimano brakes that they were originally specced with when we ordered these bikes a year and a half ago. So a nice surprise but don't be surprised if you see the Clark's brakes. Um, in an ideal world the Shimano one is the one I would prefer to see. Those Clark brakes, we've now built a fair number of bikes with those. They're not bad. Um, they have a decent feel to them. They're a little bit harder for us to uh, adjust during initial setup, but I don't think that they're a bad brake. It's just um, always nice to see an actual Shimano branded brake. It is a two piston brake. It's mated with 160 millimeter uh, brake rotors both front and rear. So that would be one of those things if down the road, if you were the person who was gonna upgrade fork, go with things like tubeless tires, even going with a 180 millimeter rotor on the front and you'll start to get a little bit more uh, power with your front brake. And your front brake, once you start riding and getting proper technique, is gonna be the brake that is most important on your bike. Uh, the stem is an appropriately short stem. I think that looks like about a 50 or 60 millimeter long stem. Um, 50 millimeters is what the spec sheet says. Yep, looks about right. Handlebars, 760 millimeters wide. And I think the bend and rise on there looks quite nice. Um, a nice thing to see on here as a detail is these file pattern actual lock-on grips. If you've seen a number of my videos on here, you will see that I kind of hate um, slide-on grips, especially slide-on big mushy grips that um, 
leave you with just a terrible feeling underhand and also the chance that you'll end up with throttle grip or with grips that want to migrate inwards when you run your controls inboard. So at least this is one thing you don't have to upgrade on this bike. So as we were talking about the specs and where there's things um, that different product managers would prioritize, I think that that is pretty good because that would be an almost certain 30 or 40 bucks that you'd be spending on new grips. One thing you definitely do want to upgrade is the pedals. Um, everything in this price point that I've seen comes with these plastic pedals with plastic pins on them. That combination of plastic pedal, plastic pin is just a pretty terrible um, pedal, um, especially if you ever have a ever so slightly damp foot. So you put your foot in wet grass and then go stand on that pedal um, you'll be slipping off that pedal soon enough. That, in addition to the fact that the uh, the sort of stock pedals at this price point typically are a really low quality bearing which at first doesn't spin well and then it's going to just develop a bunch, a bunch of play. Um, so buy this bike, first thing to do, upgrade those pedals. Second thing you do, go ride your bike a whole bunch, wait until you've worn out your tires. Even though these tires are a pretty nice all-purpose kind of a tire, um, once you've worn them out, maybe that's when you take on the project of setting it up tubeless. Make sure you wrap your chainstay. Uh, and then down the road, if you're totally in love with this and want to keep upgrading it, put yourself, uh, put a fancy fork on there. So that is the Rocky Mountain Fusion 10. As I mentioned, it's the base of a three bike lineup. The Fusion 10 and 30 are both really nice bikes. The big standouts on the Fusion 30, so you know, it actually goes up to a 32 millimeter stanchion air fork. So it gets that. It goes to a 10 speed drivetrain on the Fusion 30 I'm talking about with 11 to 48 cassette. Um, and it has even wider rims than these on that bike. So a Fusion 30 at 1419, still a really nice bike. Um, same brakes, um, one more gear, so a little bit better gear range. Um, so another one that's worth considering, the Fusion 40, the top of the line bike. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm not a fan of it, and I would say largely because it's got a SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain. On paper, SRAM SX Eagle looks good because it's got 12 speeds and a huge range of gears, but right now with the inability to find a GX derailleur to upgrade the rear derailleur on that bike, there is a good chance that your SX derailleur, even if it works well when new, after you've been riding for a month or two, they just become sloppy enough that you just have uh, in, inconsistent shifting. And we've just seen too many people coming back with bikes um, with SRAM SX who are just not happy with the performance um, starting a month or two after new. So we have been trying to avoid selling SRAM SX bikes. If this wasn't a pandemic year, I would be much more favorable on SRAM SX because you could just upgrade to SRAM GX for a rear derailleur and end up with a, an amazing range of gears. But one of those things keep in mind, if your local store somehow magically has GX rear derailleurs, go buy a SRAM SX bike and just keep some money in your bank account so that a couple months down the road, you can put a GX rear derailleur on there. So this is the Rocky Mountain Fusion 10. I forgot to mention, this is 33.2 pounds, which I think is a fair weight, uh, $1,049 in Canada. I'm Graham. These videos are done for Bike Bros. That is the shop that I own in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. We are a Rocky Mountain Giant Marin Pivot Niner Esker dealer and mountain bikes is pretty much what we specialize in, although we do sell all sorts of other stuff. If you're in the area, I hope you'll drop by the store, check us out, have a conversation about bikes. We are total bike nerds and love talking anything bicycles. Um, otherwise, 
drop us a comment if this kind of bike interests you or if there's anything else you'd like to know about it. Uh, we're in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. This is unscripted and this is me doing my thing where I just talk about bikes. Talk to you later.